Hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 6. This is the final ever episode of Game of Thrones. And I feel really weird. Um, I'm actually not looking forward to this episode. I think it might be... <clears throat> I think it might actually be the first episode of Game of Thrones I'm not looking forward to um, for multiple reasons. Like I never wanted the show to be over and now I kind of do just because I can't bear to see it butchered any further by, by just the writing team. And that I think has been probably my biggest frustration of, of this season, particularly the last half. I actually quite enjoyed the first half even though there were issues. Is that everything about the show was better this season except the writing and the writing is the primary reason for me watching the show all of the other things are wonderful but they are dressing on top of exceptional writing you know consistent characters characters whose motivations are transparent and you know, incredible attention to detail on the sort of physical and um, emotional reality of the world, the show's kind of internal world. And all of that stuff has just been thrown completely out of the window. You know, we've got one minute, a dragon can be shot three times in five seconds. The next minute he's impervious to, to scorpions. You know, we have... You know, the, the Daenerys arc, which could have been an incredible tragic arc. Absolutely incredible. The show taking us in the same way that they took, you know, seven, eight seasons to take us with J with Jamie Lannister from a boy who, a guy who throws a child out of a window to have you rooting for him. They could have done that in reverse with... Daenerys and they just didn't and I get there are people that want to defend the show and go oh, I always knew I always knew no you never liked her that's different <laughs> you know oh but oh but we saw the dragon flying and there was no it was snow that was in that throne room in the vision I've checked the scripts say snow the producers in the inside of the episode for, for that episode in the vision call it snow it wasn't ash that's called retconning it's where you choose to do something later and then you rewrite the things that you the meaning of the the things that happened in the first place to say oh we always meant to do this and they they did that with Arya they didn't know Arya was going to kill the Night King when they did the whole blue eyes brown eyes green eyes prophecy and and what's cracked me up about that is that now people who want to defend <clears throat> the show expecting Arya now to kill Daenerys and now literally going around saying but Daenerys has green eyes Amelia Clark has blue eyes we are only seeing the actress's eyes. She has always had blue eyes. Now she has green eyes. Um, you know, people sharing this list of Danny burn this, Danny burn that. Oh, she should have burned King's Landing. It was obvious she was going to burn King's Landing. It clearly wasn't fucking obvious she was going to burn King's Landing or you wouldn't have had the reaction from the mass majority of the fandom that you have had. Danny has never, ever hurt deliberately hurt an innocent person in her life in fact when she's been indirectly responsible for the harming of civilians she has not only been taken been accountable for it like actually making physical amends you know when the goat when drogon burned the fucking goat um you know she gave the guy three times the the value of the goats when the dragons burned a child she locked her own children up for a year because if you watch the inside the episode i don't know how you can defend these artistic decisions that they're making, they literally say, um, oh, go back to when um, she burned Viserys. And, you know, it, it, you know we didn't mind because it was Viserys, but there was something troubling about the look on her face. And you're like, what? That's n totally inconsistent with the way that the show has depicted revenge. What about Arya? She baked Walder Frey's sons into a pie, fed them to him. And then said, winter is coming. I, I mean, it just... And she was like... Ah. Sansa fed Ramsay to his own dogs and smirked about it. There's a whole... This, that's the thing. You can't judge one character inconsistently with the way you judge other characters. And say, oh, that's a sign of madness. Oh, because that's the Starks. It, it's just... 
and I think that's that's the that's the issue here is just complete completely changing up our kind of, it's, it's moral relativism it's like the exact same action is fine so long as it's someone that we like someone that we don't like and that's literally the opposite of what this show has been doing I think at least up until season six was the idea that there aren't goodies and baddies everyone has kind of a mixture of the two and it's you know what I can't remember the way that it's the human heart in conflict with itself it has to apply for everyone you can't just say oh no Daenerys's arc is about that but but no one else's is so I've got a real real problem with that but to be honest the Des- Daenerys arc well it was the thing that upset me most personally it wasn't the worst thing about what's happened you know Cersei who was supposed to be the arch villain just everything that she's done just acted there's no way on earth Cersei would have just cried walked downstairs and got sh- hit by rubble and I, I think everything wrong with this season was summed up um, really well, actually, in a, in a, in a review that I saw yesterday, um, where they said, you know, it feels like these guys have been handed a chessboard and they are playing checkers. And that's why it's so disappointing, I think, for people who, rightly, because the show has delivered that in the past it's not like we have unreasonable expectations the show um certainly up until season i would say you know there were issues with five and six which i now see because i didn't know where the show was going so i'm now more sympathetic to people who say it kind of peaked at four i actually now understand what those people were saying whereas whereas what we had before was the majority of the show was about character and character motivations and maneuverings and you know characters speaking to each other a lot so we were constantly seeing different interpretations of events different motivations so you could have a scene with three people with like six or seven different motivations playing off against each other and it was just like even though people were only talking it was just absolutely riveting because you're like you know what's gonna happen next and oh shit do you see that look and it was just oh my god just some ah, you could just sink your teeth into it it was beautiful i know uh, and i'm glad we'll always have those episodes to go back to um and i certainly will be after this to, to refresh myself on why the show was great the point is when you then had a big event like a mega episode it was the culmination it wasn't just the spectacle it's like the red wedding wasn't a spectacle because people got killed it was because who got killed and why and the fact that we we had seen the building blocks of this moment built over time so it was absolutely i don't know anyone who went i just don't believe walter frey would have would have killed the starks i heard no one literally no one say that you know devastated you know i lost one of my favorite characters that episode i was absolutely devastated but i was devastated with the events the the show absolutely took me with it i could see the awful mistakes that had led to that moment and it was absolutely real that that happened and that that's what that's where the emotional response came from it was that it wasn't inevitable it was that the people i loved made mistakes and they didn't survive those mistakes even though they'd done so much good the mistakes they made were just you know saw them and exactly the same with ned you know it wasn't inevitable but there were other events and, and conspiracies happening around him that meant that happened and we lost at just the centerpiece of the show at, at that point there was that this bullshit that you know has happened with Cersei and the fact Jon Snow a character that I've ne- has never been one of my favorite characters I've always found him a little bit just vanilla but I really loved his arc and all of this stuff you know this complex way that he needed to manage his identity really 
What has Jon Snow done for two seasons except make mistakes? Same as Tyrion, who's still about... I mean, Jon Snow is also a terrible boyfriend. <laughs> it's a terrible, terrible boyfriend. Like, Danny would have been better off never meeting him. I think his Jon Snow's dialogue for season eight could have been written on a napkin. It consists of, fall back. I don't want it. And, you're my queen. Owen, I love you. That is basically all the guy has said this entire season. And he's acted completely contrarily to all of those things. He hasn't acted like he loved Danny. Um, he hasn't been exceptionally loyal to her as his queen because she asked him. She told him specifically, if you release this information, I'm in danger. You are going to put me in danger and it will destroy us. But he did it anyway. And people go, oh, it was such an awful secret to have to keep. Yeah, so was Ned's. But Ned kept it because that's what honour is about. It's about the fact that when you're tested, when you're put in an awful situation, which might have terrible consequences. The whole kingdom thought Ned had had an affair. His own wife believed he cheated on her. Did he break because, oh, I feel so bad that people are going to think these things of me. No, he took it like a man. And he said, no, the most important thing is protecting the a woman that I love, Liana, and this child that I love as my nephew. I will not have him imperiled for the sake of my own people perce people's perceptions of me. If John doesn't want to be king... It makes absolutely no sense for him to tell anyone about his identity. It just doesn't. Unless you apply the sort of arguments that completely undermine the point of Ned keeping his secret. You say, oh, well, but why should he have to live as a bastard? But why should Ned have to live as a, as a cheater? Because sometimes you have to face really unpalatable decisions if you're going to be an honourable person. Now, you can say, well, I never wanted him to bend the knee to Daenerys. Fine. In which case, he's made an awful mistake. Which means he shouldn't be king anyway, because he's an awful judge of character. So I, I will do a separate video breaking down where I feel this show went off the rails and why. And to explain it, because I think it's just really useful for people, I think, who have had that experience to appreciate that they're not mad. Because I do, like, even though the vast majority of people are hugely disappointed with this season, that, that's just fact. The people who are still fans of the show, I think, are probably being meaner spirited to those who don't like it than in the reverse. So I'm seeing kind of a lot of stuff of, like, on the one hand, people are saying it's not... So if you if you nitpick about the fact that the show is completely disconnected from it, from respecting the sort of physical and character realities of the show world then you're called a nitpicker because it's not real but then when you say hang on a minute how you know this person who's never harmed an innocent thing in their lives is now mad they go oh it's, it's realistic isn't it it's so realistic the show you know because you don't always have uh you don't always have things explained in life so it's like on the one hand, the show is too realistic to create realistic characters. And on the other hand, the show is not ex it's not realistic at all. And to to <laughs> to argue that it should at least honour the 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 moral and physical universe that it's created is nitpicking. You can't have your cake and eat it. So I will do that separately. I think that I want to get into the show now and just kind of find out where this is going to go. If the rumours are true, I'm really pretty upset about where this is going. But, I, you know, none of us are going to know for sure what's going to happen in this episode until we watch it. But how it's feeling at the moment is they've just orchestrated this whole thing for the to create a pretense whereby Jon Snow can kill, betray and kill Daenerys and be considered honourable for doing so which I think is absolutely gross. I didn't like it when they did that with Tyrion and Shay, and I'm not going to like it here. But yeah, without further ado, let's find out what on earth they're going to do with this episode. 
Let's have at it. Oh, it's the last time. Can we see King's Landing just as ashes, please? It is. <laughs> That was so good. I absolutely love the title sequence. Here we go. I want you executed for treason, sir, and I don't make any apologies. Danny should literally never have taken you as a hand. Every piece of advice that she has listened to of yours has been awful. Except the final episode of Marine. Ew. There's just bodies everywhere. I really just hats off to the production team on this, the actual, like the the way that they created this. If you've not watched the inside of the episode and seen how they created this set, it's the most incredible thing in the world. It is absolutely phenomenal. Oh, that fucking child with the horse again. Let me send some men with you. I'm going alone. This is just completely unrealistic. He's the most easily identifiable person. Someone, and these people are going to be fucking outraged. You'd just be killed. The bell. In the name of the one true queen, Daenerys Targaryen, I sentence you to die. Look around you, friend. We won. I obey my queen's commands, not yours. And what are the queen's commands? Kill all who follow Cersei Lannister. Easy, man. Easy. We should speak with the Queen. He's looking for Cersei and Jamie. revenge against the Lannisters? I killed my mother, Joanna Lannister, on the day I was born. I killed my father, Tywin Lannister, with a bolt to the heart. I am the greatest Lannister killer of our time. You, you joined another army to have to defeat them. I don't understand this. I understand crying for Jaime, but Cersei? I'm not going to sympathise with these characters no matter how much the show wants me to. Where did all these Dothraki and Unsullied come from? Just regenerating troops now. Oh, fuck off. Sorry, they made you do this, Amelia. Shabka Regis Anhan, Regis Andali. Shabka Regis Anhan, Regis Andali. Hinrange mis hosno in nomadic rupa. Nadiro mentiro hetricas a barge carajeixa. Avitolvio a nuro gento si brosan. In Vrappa Tolvio Vio in Rondira Derat. In Winter Velva Dornot. In Laniso Valiniot. Grevi in Noma Pregelat. You committed treason. You slaughtered a city. The 
Ne Jakatas. She's everyone's queen now. Try telling Sansa. You'll always be a threat to her. And I know a killer when I see one. She saved his life three times. But yeah, now she's a Nazi. Oh, I hate this. I can't lie. I shot my own father with a crossbow. I betrayed my queen. You didn't. I did. Yes, you did. I can't justify what happened, but the war is over now. Did she sound like someone who's done fighting? Varys was right. I was wrong. It was vanity to think I could guide her. Oh, shit! She's not her father, no more than your Tywin Lannister. My father was an evil man. My sister was an evil woman. Pile up all the bodies of all the people they ever killed. There still won't be half as many as our beautiful queen slaughtered in a single day. Ah, oh, it's easy to judge when you're standing far from the battlefield. Would you have done it? No, neither would Daenerys, but the writers have decided that they had to do it. I don't know. Yes, you do. Everywhere she goes, evil men die, and we cheer her for it. And she grows more powerful and more sure that she is good and right. If you truly believed it, wouldn't you kill whoever stood between you and paradise? No. That's literally the same logic they're going to use to kill her. It's no different. Love is more powerful than reason. We all know that. Oh Look God, at my this is so badly fucking written, they can't even pull this off. Love is the death of duty. You just came up with that. No, it's Eamon Targaryen. Duty is the death of love. You are the shield that guards the realms of men. Oh, for fuck's sake. And you've always tried to do the right thing, no matter the cost. Pause. I've just realised why there has been so little dialogue, extended dialogue in this season. And it's because this is bad. This is two people trading mottos. There is nothing happening here. Kit Harrington has become a brilliant actor. Peter Dinklage is a phenomenal actor. And they're struggling to give me any feeling in this scene other than... I get it. By the beginning of the scene, John has to be loyal. By the end of the scene, John has to still be loyal and honourable, but has been convinced to take action against Daenerys. I get it. And it has to happen in one scene. And that's going to happen by, what, trading ancient wisdom and platitudes? I'm sorry. This, this show is better than that. Play. Also, this meeting would never have happened. Like the Varys and Ned thing, Varys snuck in to see Ned. There's no way on earth they would be letting John go in and have a powwow with Tyrion at this point. I believe it if he snuck in. What? My little drew on. Wake up, have a sniff. Targaryen, I'm going back and having a nap. So is that telling us Drogon shouldn't have done anything because John had good intentions when he went to meet Danny? But now he's gonna kill her. I don't wanna see this. I do not wanna see this at all. That's significantly worse than the vision. I hate it. This is how she's ended.
I'm still glad you're there, babe. He doesn't come to crown you, Danny. He comes to kill you. Danny! What do a thousand swords look like in the mind of a little girl who can't count to 20? Have you been down there? Have you seen children, little children burned? I tried to make peace with Cersei. She used their innocence as a weapon against me. Oh! Oh, no, she didn't! Oh, yes, she did! And Tyrion? He conspired behind my back with my enemies. Forgive him. Like you forgave Ollie? That ten-year-old boy you hanged? The world we need is a world of mercy. It has to be. If you have any last words, my lord, now's the time. I was wrong. You were the wrong commander. We all serve you. I'm sorry. Not only for this, for all I've done and said. My lord, please, mercy. Mercy. I'll go, I will. Please. I'm afraid. I've always been afraid. <laughs> and it will be. How do you know? Because I know what is good. And so do you. All the other people who think they know what's good. They don't get to choose. You are my queen. Now and always. If he kills her now, I'm gonna fucking eat that. This is actually disgusting. You fucking pricks, Game of Thrones. I'm fucking repulsed. He kissed her and fucking stabbed her. Are you fucking joking? And we're supposed to send the place. This is just fucking bullshit. Did you kill his fucking mother? Drogon, just fucking go. <laughs> Targaryen, bruv. <laughs> My own ending. He's gonna get her to the Red Priestesses and she's gonna come back alive because this is some fucking bullshit. Take her to the Red Priestesses. I want a fucking sequel where she comes back and burns the fuck out of you prick. I hated that. I hated it. They want us to sympathise with Jon Snow saying I love you while stabbing a woman in the stomach. No one sees that as problematic. Fuck's sake. Kill him. <sighs> They're not gonna kill him. Where's Jon? They were both to be brought to this gathering. If you look outside the walls of your city, you'll find thousands of Northmen who will explain to you why harming Jon Snow is not in your interest. And you will find thousands of Unsullied who believe that it is. I swore to follow Daenerys Targaryen. You swore to follow a tyrant. She freed us from a tyrant. Cersei is <laughs> gone because of her, and Jon Snow put a knife in her heart. Let the Unsullied give him what he deserves. Thank you, Yara. Say another word about killing my brother and I'll cut your throat. Friends, please. 
This fate is for our king to decide, or our queen. We don't have a king or queen. Here it comes. Bram. Oh, hey, Edmure. Nice to have you back. My lords and ladies. Don't tell me. An understa- Please sit. Maybe the decision about what's best for everyone should be left to, well, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask my horse. I have had nothing to do but think these past few weeks. There's nothing in the world more powerful than a good story. And who has a better story than Bran the Broken? <laughs> I knew it. Who better to lead us into the future? He has no empathy. From now on, rulers will not be born. They will be chosen. On this spot by the lords and ladies of Westeros. <sighs> That's not democracy. If we choose you, will you wear the crown? Will you lead the Seven Kingdoms to the best of your abilities from this day until your last day? Why do you think I came all this way? You got done wrong, Sansa. You got done wrong. I love you, little brother. I always will. You'll be a good king. But tens of thousands of Northmen fell in the Great War, defending all of Westeros. And those who survived have seen too much and fought too hard ever to kneel again. The North will remain an independent kingdom as it was for thousands of years. This is some nepotistic bullshit, people. All hail Bran the Broken. <laughs> first of his name, King of the Angels and the First Men. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this Lord Tyrion. is just ridiculous. You will be my hand. Of course. Mm. Of oh, course. Your grace, I cannot. Yes, I can. I'm king. This man is a criminal. He's made many terrible mistakes. He's going to spend the rest of his life fixing them. <laughs> you shall take no wife, hold no lands, father no children. Well, I did. You know. It doesn't feel right. It's because it's not right. Ask me again in ten years. Epilogue. Ten years, everyone's happy. See, it was totally right. Oh my god, I can't believe. I can't believe they're doing this. I should be like feeling stuff and I'm just not. Back in black, John. Univali bis valoho. Suli va vajo nat. Good. Get out of there. You should never fucking come to Westeros, pile of shit. Can you forgive me? The North is free thanks to you. You can come see me, you know. Castle Black. They can't. I'm not going back north. See what's west of us. What's west of Westeros? That's where I'm going. You have your needle? Right here. Oh, fuck's sake. I'm sorry I wasn't there when you needed me. You were exactly where you were supposed to be. This is gross. 
So he just let all this happen so he could be king. <laughs> it's just the, literally the logic they were just saying that Danny was mad for having. <sighs> you deserve so much better than this. United to Brienne of Tarth. <sighs> Don't do this to me now. Revisionist history does a fucking hero now? I can't, I can't even with this fucking episode. Yeah, I get it. Back to that really funny time when Tyrion did the thing with the chairs. It's very funny. This prick. What's this? A song of ice and fire. Oh, hurrah. I could care less now, honestly. I suppose I come in for some heavy criticism. I don't believe you're mentioned. There are many who know that without you, this city faced certain defeat. The king won't give you any honors. The histories won't mention you. That we will not forget. And Drogon? Yeah. Any word? <clears throat> He was last spotted flying east to Ireland. Farther away, the better. Perhaps I can find him. Fuck off. Leave our... Do carry on with the rest. Leave him alone. We serve at your pleasure, King Bran the Broken, ruler of the Six Kingdoms and protector of the realm. Long may he reign. All the best brothels burned down. The Master of Coin is willing to fund reconstruction. Uh, the Archmaester is less than enthusiastic about the salutary effects of brothels. I once brought a jackass and a honeycomb into a brothel. I really wanted that line, and it just doesn't mean anything now. No, I'm sad, and then Tormund goes to her and I'm happy, so please don't. Anything but that. There's Tormund. Fierce. Something. I guess spring is coming. <laughs> Jerry will come down now and go. Oh, uh, why did they do 